welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, I'm going to show you how I cast on to double pointed needles so that way I don't drop stitches and I don't curse when I am at church knitting socks. I had a really great student one time call this the no cuss cast on, so that's what I've called it and I'm going to show you how to do it now. For the no cuss cast on, you want to use the long tail cast on method to cast on your stitches. I prefer to use a set of five double pointed needles. So when I cast on to my needles, I wanna make sure I take whatever my cast on number is and divide it by four so I can equally divide those stitches among these needles. I will place a slip knot directly onto one of the needles and then I will put that portion of stitches on this needle. So for example, for a sock, you might want to put on 12 stitches or 16 stitches, depending on the size you're making. If you wanna follow along with the My First Sock by Marley Bird, make sure you click on the pattern link right down the video description box below, and you can make your own socks using this very cool method. I'm gonna cast on 12 stitches. So I have one stitch on my needle, and I will do the long tail cast on for 12 more stitches. Once I get the number of stitches on my first needle, I'm ready to move on and put the same number of stitches on my next needle. I have this really great ridge right here on the bottom of my needle because of the long tail cast on. If I take my next needle and I rest it right up next to that ridge, okay, see how it's right up next to that ridge, and I extend it up ever so slightly, now my second needle just looks like it's an extension of my first needle, correct? I've also made sure that my tail or my long tail cast on is below both needles. Like it is not between this needle, it's not over top of my second needle or anything, it's below. Now I can continue on doing my long tail cast on, but this time I will cast on to the second needle and I'll make sure that this stitch butts up right next to that last stitch I did on the previous needle. Can you see that? So that stitch is right up next to that one and I continue on. So for this example, I would go ahead and I would put 12 stitches. I want to point out that you'll notice I'm holding both needles together down here. I'm not separating them out. I'm not letting one just fall to the wayside. I'm holding on to both. And that's very important for what I wanna show you to do. So make sure you have held on to both needles. Once you've completed the stitches on needle two, you can see once again, I have that nice little ridge. So I would grab my third needle, rest that right up next to that second needle, resting right on the ridge, a little bit extended, making sure that my long tail is coming from the bottom. See how it's not over top of that needle at all. And now I go ahead and I cast onto the third needle, making sure that first stitch is really close to that last stitch I did on the previous needle. That's very important. I'll go ahead and put my stitches onto this needle too. You'll notice I took a second there just to move up this needle a little bit to give myself more um, room. And you can do that, but I still have a hold of all three needles. Notice I haven't let go. Now remember, I'm working with a set of five needles, so I'm going to do one more needle here. Rest it right up next to that long tail cast on. Extend that up ever so slightly, making sure that my working yarn and my tail are below that next needle. And then I carry on casting on, making sure that first stitch is really close to the last stitch from the previous needle. Once you get the total number of stitches cast on to all of your needles, the next step is what makes this absolutely magical. 
I will take this set of needles, notice they're still in my hand, I'm holding on to all of them, and I want to place them down on the table just like so. And by doing this, it looks like I have this needle, that needle, that needle, that needle. If it were all just one needle, this line of stitches, they look like they're continuous without any gaps, without any spaces. And that's very important to make sure that we don't get any ladders right here from the very start. Now that we've cast on our stitches and all of our join points are really nice and snug, it's time to put our needles in the position so we can start working in the round. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim off any extra long tail I have here. And I'm just leaving about five to six inches. I'm gonna get rid of that just so I don't accidentally knit with it. And here's the kicker. When you go to join these needles in the round, our ultimate goal here is to make this very first stitch we did meet up with this very last stitch we did. So that way, as the yarn comes from the very last stitch, we will knit into this first stitch, which will join the piece in the round. What we have to be careful of is that we don't twist our stitches. So this is how I ensure that I don't twist stitches. Part of the reason I made sure you held on to all of the needles is so that they weren't dangling around and accidentally getting twisted around and, and just getting out of shape for you. Because if you held on to them and you've placed them on the table like this and you do what I'm getting ready to show you to do, you'll have perfect join and a perfect non-twisted um, long tail cast on. You ready? I have my stitches down like this. I'm gonna take this, the last needle I did, I'm just gonna hold it in place. Okay, so I'm not gonna let it go anywhere. I'm gonna take these three needles and having, having the needles work on top of the next, I'm just gonna turn all three of them. Can you see that? I'm gonna move this right here so you can see here. I've just moved all three needles, okay? Now I'm gonna hold the needle right here that I just turned. I'm gonna take these two needles and I'm gonna have them rotate as well. Get the yarn out of the way for you. I'll have those rotate. Can you see that? Now I'll hold this third needle and I'm gonna take the very last one and I'm making sure that the needles are going on top of each other, you see that? And I'm just rotating. I now have a square that is perfect in that my last stitch now meets up with my first stitch ready to be knit. I have this really great ridge of pearls that I can see from using the long tail cast on. They're all on the inside of my circle, which is where I want them to be. I don't see any of them twisted around any of the needles. Perfect, that means I'm not twisted. I don't see any twist here at my join points, and that's because I held onto my needles all at the same time, and I made sure that that first stitch on the next needle always butted right up next to the last stitch I did on the previous needle. So now I have my needles set in a great position, ready to start working in the round. Now that the needles are positioned in this manner, you can go ahead, jump in, join to work in the round, and begin working on your double pointed needles. And you have done the no cuss cast on. <laughs> Isn't it cool? You haven't dropped a stitch, your stitches aren't twisted, and you're ready to go. Good luck. Hey, thanks for joining me today on the channel. If you want more videos just like that one, check out some of these other videos that I've already handpicked for you. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that way you're up to date whenever I release a new video. And don't forget, smash that like button as my kids say. Bye guys.